Hey guys, and happy Thursday. I'm so happy you're able to join me this evening. The weather's pretty good in Philadelphia, so there's a lot of good things going on. I want to personally thank, I'm sorry, I want to personally thank each and every viewer, supporter, and guest that have been on my show or have viewed my show. I want to give you a personal thank you because without you, this really wouldn't be. I'm your host, Shay Renee, and you can watch each and every episode of the Indie Spotlight and the Indie Spotlight Special Edition on my main Instagram page at Shay Renee 215 So just go to my main page, Shay Renee 215 and look underneath the IGTV tab and you can watch every episode of the Indie Spotlight and the Indie Spotlight Special Edition, past and present. <laughs> but tonight's episode of the Indie Spotlight Special Edition Thursdays, which is happening now on Instagram Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a very, very special guest and a huge trailblazer in the viral community. His name is Presley Snipes. But before I tell you a little bit more about Presley Snipes, I want to tell all of the viewers <clears throat> to keep the comments at a minimum because we don't want to distract our guests from talking. But however, there is a great feature um, below where you can ask questions. Ask as many questions as you want and I will definitely, definitely, I'm sorry, and you can ask as many questions to the guests as you want and I'll try to get everybody's questions up there. Okay, guys. So we're we'll just wait for uh, Presley to come into the room and we'll start the interview. Now, a little bit of what I want to tell you about Presley is he's pretty much like a pioneer of going viral before the whole apps came out. Right. He appeared. Um, he's known for or best known for one of the best known for things he's best known for is criminals gone wild. Um, in 2007, and I think uh, Criminals Gone Wild 2 in 2008, uh, this was a huge deal on YouTube. And he was at, he actually got to speak with Bill O'Reilly. He got invited on the Bill O'Reilly Report, which was a very, very, very huge news thing. And also CNN. Okay, he's also a Grammy, um, a Grammy nominated uh, writer or producer. And he's actual music consultant. And he has a lot to tell us, a lot to say. So anybody that wants to hear about the music business, to hear about promotion, hear about um, all his successful strides, should definitely, definitely view this. You can view it now or view it later. But this is definitely something where um, artists shouldn't really miss. He's going to be dropping some jewels on us. Hello. Hey there, everybody. So, let me see. Hey! Hello. Hey there. Hold on. I was trying to um, I was trying to play, get joined on my laptop, but uh, I'm on my phone. Oh, if you needed a little more time, I can always just let you go. And no, that's cool. It's cool. I'm just gonna prop my phone up. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, I got something that I could, I, could, I got a tripod for this. Hold on one second. Give me a second. <laughs> Oh, I also forgot to tell you guys when I was telling you a little bit about Presley or Presley Snipes, because um, I, I can't I don't want to pronounce your real name wrong, but you'll tell me all that. He also made a book about the music business that I literally viewed on YouTube and it was definitely a game changer. So I want you all to actually like look into that. But we'll talk more about that when he comes back to the camera. I hope we're not having any difficulties about coming back. I hope it's not. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, I found it. Hey. I found it. I got okay. one of those, uh... um, So first, I would like to ask you, how's your day? How's your day going? Or how's your day going? Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I'm having a good. good day, actually. Hold on one second. I'm just going to get this tripod because I got this. Sure, sure. Yeah, I got it. I mm -hmm. got it. Stand, so I'm gonna put it on this tripod. Give me one second. 
You got the right stuff because you're like a creator anyway, so you got all the right stuff. Hey there, everybody. My stand. I'm just gonna prop this up on my computer. Sure. Yeah, you that's fine. Start buying stuff, and the next thing you know, you got too much stuff, and you can't can't find anything. Right. Yeah. I don't know what I did with that stand. Yeah. So what's up? So I wanted to tell you first, thank you, um, and thank you for being on the show, and also thank you for being so reachable for me to be able to reach toward to reach you and to talk to you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, so I'm trying to think what I first wanted to ask. So I was telling everyone about like some of the, like a lot of the stuff you did, like you did a whole lot of stuff. I was like, y'all want to talk y'all. I know a lot of people know about like this whole going viral type thing with these different apps, but you literally is like one of the people that's like, I would say like a, a trailblazer and like going viral. I was like, this is, yeah, this is the, this is the going viral. This is like how it all started. But you tell me some more things about, um, about yourself. Can you hear me? I kind of got, does my mic sound muffled anything? No, no, okay. it sounds clear. I don't know where to start. I don't know. I just, been, I just okay. had a computer. I can start. I had, like, <laughs> I had a computer since I was like a teenager and I just been trying to make stuff with it. You know, just trying to create and make things with my laptop or my computer. And that's just how it started. You are an artist too. Huh? You are an artist. And that song you made called Alcohol. I was like, I'm putting this in the story, like when I advertise uh, Presley's, um, me and his uh, interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, and I, like I was that. like, my mom was like, oh, I like that. I was like, I do too. I was like, okay. Uh, thank you. I, yeah, I like, to, I like to write when I when I have time to write songs. And it's fun. Um, it's normally very, very exciting for me to talk to someone that did a lot, a lot of meaningful things behind the scenes. Now, you... Um, are you are one of you are best known for one for one of the things you are mo best known for is criminals gone wild right in twenty oh seven and twenty oh eight yeah yeah could you talk about that a little bit um we criminals gone wild what was I thinking when I made that I was I was doing um I was experimenting with um, mm -hmm. my um I was making short short films with the camera I had at the time. And um, I wasn't just doing it for fun. I was actually trying to make money off of whatever whatever I'm doing. I'm not like doing it just for fun. Like there's a fi mm. I, there's usually a financial motive to anything that I get involved in. Um, mm. So I was making these movies and I was putting them on the early internet, but there wasn't there was mm. nowhere to, for someone at that time to make money off of this type of stuff. I'm talking about 1998. 1997. That's right. So mm -hmm. I was like, that was when the DVD DVDs were big. That that form of media had just came out, and um, I was like, yeah, maybe I could distribute my work through the DVD format. It's a new format. So I started out in the DVD game, and um, when I be I would be on the streets trying to sell my DVDs to people, and um, ended up meeting dvd distributors and they would tell me what they wanted i would see what they wanted i would see what was the top selling stuff that they had and it was usually it was smack dvd it was it was crackheads going wild and it was um sensational stuff hip-hop and violence and crime um and that's what i was like well damn i was doing like a kind of a sketch comedy kind of variety show kind of thing and it was selling when I would speak to people and I would tell them what it was about because you'd be, you'd be on the street selling DVDs and people would think you were selling like Hollywood movies. And they think, oh, I'm just out here selling, you know, Denzel's latest movie. And this is a bootleg movie. And this, this may be a blank disc. 
but I would show people, no, this is me on the cover. I'm selling, I made this. So um, it all started like that. And then, um, but like, it was working good on a personal level. When we meet people, we stop people and we sell it to them on the streets. They buy it because they would, they say, oh, I like this guy. He's yeah. cool. He's likable. I'm mm -hmm. going to see what he's doing. But when it was time to sell it in mass quantities, um, by the thousands, the distributors, they wasn't, they wasn't trying to buy it. They say, who was in it? And we didn't have no celebrities mm -hmm. in it. So um, I was like, damn, I got to make something a little more that's going to catch people's attention. So I was just like, yo, if I make a movie where crime is just happening, people are going to love this shit. I mean, excuse me, people are going to love this stuff. So um, there was a show I used to grow up watching called Rescue 911. And this was a show that mm -hmm. came on like in the nineties and it would be, mm -hmm. there would be scenarios where people would call 911 and they, they like try to, they do dramatizations. So that's really how mm -hmm. it all started. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know what, when you were talking about, um, it's so funny how like we, we, um, how we see uh, films and things in cinema or how we see films and stuff like that. Now it's like everything's on demand. There's no hard copy of anything. But honestly, after I seen the money that these distribution companies is paying on so many views, it's going to, it looks like it's going to be seeming like people are going to should, or shall I say independent artists should go back to actually selling a CD because you know, you got to put money back into the business. Man, it's so much money being made now. Um, like even with Spotify, like it, it's not how it was. Um, I don't like to keep mm -hmm. talking about the past and the, the old days and all that, but it's great right now. Whether people, whether artists realize it or not, because there's all these new digital platforms um, that where mm -hmm. you can monetize. And I mean, if you're if you're somebody who actually has a, if you're able to build up a following and you got ten, twenty thousand followers you could really turn that into a career now so it's just i just think it's a great time right now to be a creator and be an artist mm -hmm. and um yeah like it was it was tough starting out in the times where you had to um i don't know i had to seem like i had to work harder than people have you, to do work now to kind of get their brand out there so i think it's just a lot easier now to succeed in, in digital media you um now, when now when you did Criminals Gone Wild, you actually got called on CNN and the Bill O'Reilly Report. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I seen that, and I was like, that was really huge at the time. Like, <laughs> I didn't see no creators. I don't see nobody viral. On, in fact, I don't see anybody going viral now on CNN. Out of it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there wasn't. There wasn't. They didn't. It's hip hop digital it just still it wasn't digitized it was the music business was mm -hmm. making money but as far as the video viral video content there, there wasn't ca hd cameras and everything so when i came when i came out of my movie i was shooting it on the best cameras i had like a three four thousand dollar camera so the quality of it was so good they had never seen the hood like this they never seen they never <laughs> right. seen it so in hd you know what I'm saying? So, mm, and this was mm -hmm. back when people were shooting on flip phones. It looked like they say, "Oh, would you shoot that on a potato?" You know, this was back <laughs> then. So it's like, yeah, it was mm. crispy. So I think that was part of the reason. It just, it just, there was no Instagram at the time. So I don't know. It's like Crazy. a lot of it's oversaturation of content right now. Hey, hey, Taj, Definitely. Taj, I'm in a meeting. Close the door, Taj. My son, he's in, he's in there. Oh, how old is he? He's five. Yeah, I'm in a meeting right now, Taj. Hi. Hi. Daddy walking? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be with you in a second, buddy. <laughs> he's looking at you at work. <laughs> yeah, he's great. So where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. You're from Brooklyn, New York. And you're still you still currently reside in New York? No, I haven't been to New York in Oh, okay. okay. Six, I, been, I left New York in twenty fourteen when I when I got when we had that hit song, I left. I moved I was in Atlanta. We definitely gonna get in that part. What'd you say? Yeah, I moved to Atlanta <laughs> and um I got a big okay. I got a big mansion out in Roswell and then long story short, I ended up in LA and I just went out there for um the Warner Chapel Christmas party just to show up because, you know, we had the number one song at the time. And then next thing I know, I was living in L.A. for two, three years. And 
Then uh, from LA, I ended up here in Arizona right now. I'm like, I'm in the Arts District in Phoenix right now. So I've been living out here for the past um, couple of years. I'm enjoying it. So what time is it over there in Phoenix, Arizona? Same time it is in LA, three hours. Three hours behind the East oh, Coast. Oh, okay. I had okay. I had no idea. I would have um, added that to it. But um, you, so tell me what what um, where can people find you at on social media? Here, I'm Presley Snipes on every social media um, page, but I, I don't really be on social media that much to tell you. But I, I I don't really be on that much. Like um, I'm mostly YouTube. I'm mostly just like like content wise. I mostly just YouTube. Like, I put videos. I don't really put that many videos on Instagram. I think that's what I'm lacking right now in my uh, marketing. Sure. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a YouTube guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, YouTube has been around for a long time, and it's definitely reliable, and it's a, definitely a great place to store stuff. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your book, which is the, the book that I listened to, the audio book, and I, I really enjoyed it. It had some really, really good stuff in it. How long did it take you to write that book? I wrote that book in like three months, three, maybe three, two, three months. I was done with that project. Yeah, it was, um, it was a tough time for me. Um, in 2017, when I wrote that book, um, I was just coming off like a hit song and, um, you know, living, I was at a high in my life. And um, mm -hmm. then uh, reality started setting back in and I started to have to really, um, I started realizing I had to manage. I had to manage myself better. I had to manage my money better. I had to manage my life better mm -hmm. if I was going to be able to maintain this lifestyle that I was living. So it was a it was mm -hmm. a reflection period for me in 2017. I had moved. I had left LA and I moved back to Atlanta, and um, I was trying to get back to what I was doing before I went to the West Coast. So I was living out in. Um, I was living in in South Atlanta, and. Um, I had this big ass house that I rented and everything was just seemed like it was falling apart because everything I was doing, I was doing a lot of work. I was doing a lot of stuff for other people, but like, and then it ended up, I ended up, <laughs> I ended up footing all the bills. So I was like really in a reflection mm -hmm. stage. So I was really just mm -hmm. between projects and I was just like thinking like, damn, what am I going to do? Um, what am I going to do? And I was just like, I just started writing. I just started writing one day and a um, uh, hundred words turns to a thousand, a thousand words turned into 5,000, 5,000 turned to 20,000. The next thing I know I'm at 40,000 words and I see 40,000 words is, is the length of a novel. I said, wow, I got a novel. So that's just how it started. And I, I really, it didn't take much thought because it, it was all coming from the heart. It was all, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, this is so it was it was it was I I love that it was an audio book because I'm like, all I got to do is like sit and I can clean my house and I can listen to all these different things. And it had the chapters and chronological in the right order. And, you know, you could listen to did you can listen to them out of context and everything like that. But I, I really enjoyed it. And I suggest anybody that's on YouTube, they should be um looking for the the book what is it called how to make it it's in the called music how to business? make it in a music business using social media marketing to build a large following it's a long title that's literally it's everybody. a long title but yes yeah, basically how to make it in a music business and um it should show up but i yeah i gave it away for free i was selling it on amazon and audible and it's still for sale but it got to a point where i was just like i i don't know i just started realizing that i was bringing more i sharing information it was more viable than just like trying to sell it to everybody because some people truly mm -hmm. truly can't afford it can't afford some people don't got the twenty dollars so they may be able to afford it but they just they're skeptical and they're cheap with their money or they really may not believe in themselves enough to spend money on a passion so i'm just like yeah. well this this there's some there's people i know there's people out there that you could you could put something out there for free and they'll still buy it if they support you they support what you're doing. Exactly. So I just got to the point yeah. where I was like, yo, I just need to get this information for free. Like, God forbid I pass away and now I'm over here harboring this information and, you know, this is for the world. This is for everybody. So just put it out there for free. And uh, it's been, it's been, the project has been a success. 
it, you know, what's the unique part about it is that you're an actual artist. You were the act, you produced, you were an actual video creator, you were in the music business, you're managing people. So it's like from all these different, it's from all these different angles. Like I see music books, but it might be just from the producer, but I'm like, but you don't know how it is to be the artist. And you have like, you are like five things in one. So you're looking, you're talking about it from different angles, you know, and that's what, that's what I liked about it a lot. Thanks. So, um, I really, really enjoyed that part. And, uh, I was listening to the one part when you were talking about, I think it was about lawyers, like about lawyers and the conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. I could literally go on and on about like some music business stuff, but let me see um, which other question I want to ask. What is the best advice you would tell or you would give to an up and coming artist or someone who's up and coming in music, an artist or a producer? The best advice that I could give them? Mm -hmm. I would first want to know what are their goals like what is, what is, mm -hmm. what's your goals like because for a long time I didn't know what, I, I had goals to succeed but I'm mm -hmm. starting to, I'm starting to realize um you ever see that movie it's like a, it's like um the with the genie and you have three wishes but then he says oh I want to be rich but then you you rub it and then you get you get like a, a billion pennies, you know, and you're thinking, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you're like, yeah, Yo, yeah. I'm like, oh, I want to be rich. I want it to be a billion dollars. You know, it, it's like if you're not what I'm trying to say is if you're not specific with your dreams, you'll get exactly what you you know, you'll get the the minimum. You'll get the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. And um mm. I'm starting to be more specific with what I want with my financial goals is if my goal is to make a uh, a million dollars this this year a million a uh, hundred thousand dollars this month i'm specific not just oh i, I just want to get paid this year or oh we going to come up this year or we going to do it big this year i'm going to get yeah you know it, it's it's more my my, <laughs> stuff, my goals are way more specific now so yeah. i just suggest to people because you could spend a lot of time aimlessly wondering and um, mm -hmm. if you're not specific what you want, you'll get exactly the bare minimum, maybe less. Maybe you'll get more sometimes, but I don't know. I'm just trying to be more specific with my goals. So that's what I would suggest to anybody, whether it's music, starting business, be very specific on what you want and the goals that you're setting because um, you'll get it. You'll get everything that you're projecting, that you're trying to get. I noticed that everything I've asked for, that I asked life for, I've gotten it. My problem was I wasn't asking for enough. You know what I mean? Like my goal was just to get a car, to get that car I wanted. Or I just wanted, I, I, for a while, I just wanted the BMW 650. Then I got it. I got the newer one. I wanted the old one. And I got the newer one. Then I got it and I had it. And then it was just like, now what? It's like, that was my goal in life to get a car. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, I want this car. I want to have 10 million in the bank. I want to have some properties in different states. I want to be a landlord. Yeah. I want to have be invested in some crypto and some stock. It was just very small. Like I just want a car. And it's just like, we limit ourselves. Like you'll, you'll limit yourself with, by having these whack dreams, by just having, and I'm not saying it's whack dreams. I mean, it's great to buy the car of your dreams, but you'll get it and then it just you just be like is it it's like so right you know um i'm just trying to dream bigger set bigger goals and dream bigger you know i like that like just focus like you should you should focus on what you want specifically yeah um do you have any merch for sale besides your music yeah <laughs> i'm just not this funny because I just, I just, I have a product that's that's out right now. Well, it's not really out. I'm waiting for the first, my first shipment. But I don't really want to tell people what it is because you don't have to. Well, because the thing is, it's a it's a different product than like people know me for criminals going wild, and I don't really want to mix that because this is a clean product that has nothing to do with hip hop, has nothing to do with none of that race culture. It's kind of I, I've stepped out of this box that I put myself in with just this music business manager. 
I stepped out of that world and now I'm in a world that's so broad. I don't want that to taint <laughs> this this thing. So that's that's so um, that's totally fine. Um yeah, okay. You'll hear about it soon. I'm just gonna wait till it's doing a, a, a hundred thousand a month. It's on the trajectory to being a million dollar a year business and then I'll tell people about it. But I don't really wanna because I don't want my past to affect what I'm working on right what now. What you doing? Yeah, but see, I do have I do I have something going on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I I respect that. Um. If you could work with anyone, I I normally would say if you could work with any artist, but I'm going to ask you, if you could work with any artist, producer, creator, inventor, or whoever, who would you want to work with? Jesus, no. I mean, <laughs> hold on, no. Just, let me, I, Michael Jackson. How about that? Michael Jackson, you would have wanted to work with Michael them. Jackson. Yeah. Um, are you doing any coaching or workshops or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, I coach. Um, I don't really, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't have any coaching clients, but mm -hmm. the people who I do work with, I coach them. They need advice. I give them advice. I let them know what I'm doing. I give them my perspective. But I'm not like actively mm -hmm. taking on like coaching client clients that I coach. I do some consultations here and there um, on you on my YouTube channel and on like Skype and Zoom. But um, I'm not okay. like I don't have like a career as a coach like right now. No. Okay, okay, it's a coach or a mentor or um. So. Tell me about like your albums and the music that you're making because you are an artist. Um, are you doing that currently? Are you? Are you? Um... Yeah, I, I I I play around the studio. Um, it's become more of a passion. Um, I started off when I was originally started my artistry. It was my. It was like I was saying before. It was a money motivation behind it. Like I was um, just doing it to make money. I discovered iTunes and TuneCore and all of those digital distribution services, and I realized that if I sent music every month to these services, whether my music became mainstream or not, then I was going to be able to make money if I played along with the keywords and whatever was going on at the time. So um, I started off as an artist just making money in the music business. I wasn't really thinking about being a famous singer or a rapper. I was just good. If I could do 5,000 uh, downloads at $1.29 a month, my life is, is, is I'm living a, a good life you know what i mean for at the time so um i just started real humble and in the process I, I was learning the ins and outs of digital distribution and trends and follow learning how to follow trends learning how to study mm -hmm. the charts finding out what's trending why is this trending this week and just kind of just understanding the market so it was a, it was like through, I don't know, like I just learned through my own trial and error, uh, mm -hmm. just being an artist. It wasn't so much like, I don't know, like I don't think fame was ever my objective when I got into my music career as a musician, I don't, you know. So I'm going to ask um, the question of what tips would you give to an artist when they're working in the studio? You know, um, I don't know. Like some, some of the, um, I don't know. Some people have it easier than others when they get in the studio. Like I've been in the studio with people that they get in there and then there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Um, to to, mm -hmm. to produce or come up with something um and then you got guys i'd be in a studio with they just naturally just just they get in there they already got 100 songs in their head and they just get in there and it's just free spirit some guys i see they could just freestyle some guys i know i see they masters at writing and they have a lot of material um and some people go in there and try to write on the spot um i i, I really don't i don't know like whatever you're mm -hmm. whatever you're good at just just you know, work on that. If you're if you're a writer, if you're someone who's not good at coming up with stuff um, in the studio, then you need to be right having books and books of songs when you go to the studio. Because I, I remember once a mom at the studio with this kid, and his mom had a lot of money. She was a millionaire, and um, 
we was in Hollywood. We in the studio twenty five hundred a night, and he didn't have one song. And we're just in there, and he's just blowing through his mom's money. And um, I'm trying to write a song for him, but he just was in there, and we just in there playing ping pong. And I'm just like, well, shit, it's not my money. You know what I mean? Like, you you, you spend twenty five hundred to go play ping pong. You know, that's uh, it must be nice, but I don't know. Like, I just say be prepared, and you don't always have to go to the studio. Um, to be, you know what I mean? You can do a lot of stuff from home. Like a lot of people, I don't know, sometimes it's cool to be in the studio environment, but I do all of my stuff from home. Like a lot of the greatest stuff comes at home when you're in your own element, when there's no pressure. You know what I mean? When there's, when there's no pressure, you got more time. You're not looking at the clock as much. You know, um, you just got more time to perfect your, your vocals or just master. So, I mean, I, I, I recommend trying to, master in your home studio before you go and you know be paying for sessions and all of that you know this is the question that i i think i've been waiting to hear about and uh it's about one of your artists who made a really really large hit and i think it's called tuesday mm -hmm. Um, could you talk a little bit about that and the artist and like what was the like the situation that happened with that? I think this could be very educational for anyone that's in music or anyone that wants to hear a really, really. Yeah, I was, really um, I was, I was, I was um, in 2011. I was running mm -hmm. a website and um, I started, I started signing artists, and I, the first artist I signed ended up getting signed to drake and uh and what was that artist's name i don't know if you can say it or I'm yeah not yeah sure. yeah his name is mcconan man shout out shout out to mcconan um yeah okay signed, is his name, I, is his name, I love mcconan yeah well i we don't you know we don't really love mcconan anymore now nah, we love we still love <laughs> now nah, we still love McConan. i'm joking now nah, that's that's okay. that's that's bro and i'll always look at him as family um he actually reached out to me a few days ago and um then he's scared to call me, so you had to have someone else call me for him. And I'm like, yo, you could call me, bro, anytime. Like, I'm not harboring any animosity. Um, I think, uh, yeah, he ended up he ended up write, uh, writing a big song, and um, the song was never going to come out. It was never going to come out. Tuesday wasn't going to come out. It was just one of those songs, and I don't want to say um, the other producer he was working with at the time, um, he was kind of harboring his music. I think he was saving some of his music for, he had plans with his music, but we had plans. I had plans as for my artist. So, so you was, I love McConan. Uh, you were, I love McConan's manager or promoter or. I, I signed him. I mean, like for, I really, oh, you signed was, him. Okay. He was signed. He was really signed to my label. The, it, the whole manager thing was just a title. Like I signed him okay. from the first person to actually think this was going to work. And I signed him. And and um, I, I got some bad advice, and I only signed him to a management agreement instead of a production agreement. But you know, I figured you know we were we were business partners, so whatever was going to happen, it was going to happen as a team. So whether it was going to be um, we was going to do a production deal, or we was going to do a, I figured it was all going to end up coming together. Um, so I really wasn't stressing the paperwork um, as much, but I, I probably sh I should have um, because when things hit the fan money started getting involved you know it, it, stuff starts uh links start getting loops you know what i'm saying so but i mean the project was a success you know we all made a lot of money and um so, yeah. um not to interrupt you when you were talking but just to talk about the song is by i love mcconan and it's called tuesday featuring drake and it had 163 million views to the date it went triple and this on was, youtube and that's yeah, well, and it wasn't it was no, was it uh, nominated for a Grammy? Well, the other version, there was another version that did six hundred million views. So that went four times platinum on, on that version because someone did a remake of it. I don't know if you ever seen it. And that, oh. that was more successful than McConan's song. And that did six hundred million. Then the one with Drake? No. No. <laughs> it's funny that I got a song the the song someone else did it. A DJ overseas remade the song. And it it surpassed oh. it surpassed McConan and Drake's version. It did almost it did like a billion streams of more total, 
and um wow. yeah yeah it did it did 600,000 on YouTube and it did like maybe 300 another 300,000 on Spotify so it's 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 did well over a billion streams um so yeah mm. it was a it was a mega hit a mega international mega mega hit wow so what happened between you and I love McConan like after that I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Oh, okay. I really don't know. I don't know. Like I, I just, I just know we was working. We was working one day, and then one day, um, I just stopped hearing from him. I don't know. He just, I just, I just stopped hearing from dude. And then next thing I know, um, all these shows are going on, and money's being made, and I'm waiting to get paid. And then I, the check never oh. came. The check never came. So you never got paid from that? Yeah, I got paid. Yeah, I got oh. paid. I'm okay. talking about like I'm talking about like show money. You know, mm -hmm. shows are going on. You you know, shows are happening, and you're supposed to be getting as a, as a manager, you're supposed to be getting at least fifteen twenty percent. And um, I was mm -hmm. signed up for twenty percent. And I, you know, people, money starts touching people's hands, and they start switching up on you. You know what I mean? They stay. Mm -hmm. People want the whole hundred dollars. They don't want eighty dollars, which is crazy to me, but. Some people just want the whole hundred dollars, you know what I'm saying? And they'll be willing to cut somebody's hand for that other twenty dollars. Not me, but I mean I can't that's just how it is. Like, you know what I mean? I wish everyone the best, but some people just comes the money, they just you know, cutthroat. Yeah, it becomes different. Yeah. Um so and I normally ask um, if you have any questions. Uh, if you, this is the time when I normally ask my guests, do they have any questions for me? Um, questions? I don't have no questions. I listen. I just want to listen, and I'll yeah. I'll share whatever I can share. But I don't I don't yeah, have any good. questions. I don't. So due to um, due to COVID nineteen and how huge the impact on it on the like live music and live entertainment and live events industry. Where do you see the future of like the music industry going? Like the near future of it? What do you see happening? Virtual virtual concerts. Um I'm I'm working with I'm working with a buddy of mine. Um he was actually a part of the Criminals Go Wild project and we're doing we're experimenting with some virtual virtual uh digital currencies and virtual concerts and i got one of those vr headsets and yeah like i'm it's crazy it's a whole different virtual world going on outside of youtube and instagram and the social media platforms that people are um accustomed to um there's about i think it's this next 10 years is gonna be crazy um it's it's wide open um I've been, I've been, I don't know. I think it's all gonna go virtual. It's go, it is virtual. It's going virtual now. Um, I have this, I have this headset, and um, you can actually put the headset on, and it looks like your front row at an NBA game. And I was watch, I was watching Steve. I was at a Steve Aoki event the other day, and I was sitting front row, and he was right there. And um, I think that's the future: virtual uh, events, virtual reality. Yeah, that's where I think it's going. Are there any artists that you're working with or anybody that you're working with now that you want to talk about or share their project that you guys are doing or you have any premiere projects or up-and-coming performances? Yeah, I'm working on a few projects right now, um, mostly passion projects. Um, one of my brothers, um, one of my brothers, Devin Malik, he's, uh, he's an artist out of Atlanta. Um, Decatur and he's a young artist I'm working with and he's been like he's been like a brother from to me so I've been working on his project um, my family Blackbeard he got a project we we made making a few songs together so I'm still I'm still in the, doing the music a little bit but I've been mainly like just focusing on the next 10 years um, I've been thinking been, been investing in crypto lately learning about that space trying to get involved in this mm -hmm. NFT boom and um, just trying to find new outlets and new ways to, to express creativity and get my ideas across that aren't conventional. 
And what are like the things that you want out or the things that you want everyone to know about or to tune into uh, this year that are that is either created by you or made by you? Yeah, you just um well, you can just subscribe to my YouTube channel because um I'm gonna be I have a few series on there and I wanna continue to um give advice but as soon as I find um looking for a, a, a cameraman out here so that I can continue some of the web series that I'm producing. I have this series, um it's called Making Money with Prezi Snipes and I was really um showing my real estate journey. Um I started mm -hmm. I got into real estate a few years real estate investing a few years ago and um I've been documenting that journey um to the point where, you know, started becoming an income generating business. But like I was thinking like I really want to um, make content that's just like outside of me. It's not so much about me. It's more about other people. So I don't know. I'm just working on content, looking for a new cameraman to work with. Um, not trying to force no relationships, um, business relationships, kind of just letting things happen naturally. Um, you know, filed for my new patent, got a new product coming out. Y'all got to love it when I finally announce what it is but you know, yeah well, congrats yeah. to that yeah i'm a i'm an inventor now okay so you're an inventor now which is dope which is awesome so you want everyone to subscribe to presley snipes youtube and you have a lot of different things on their web series tips advice and everything like that and hopefully somehow uh i would work with you or we could work together in some way or form like business or something yeah for sure for sure um what uh, do you have any advice for someone who's trying to promote? Like, what do you feel like is the best way to, or one of, one of the good ways to like promote stuff, or you know, just like a good promotional tip? Um, you need a camera. Well, everyone has a camera now with these camera phones. There's really no excuse. You got to just take action. It's really taking action. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say whatever platform you're gonna focus on. Focus on that platform and build it up, whether it's YouTube, whether it's going to be TikTok, whether it's going to be Instagram. Um, Facebook seems like it's tough to build on now. It's kind of like it's corporate. It's real corporate now. So I think there's still an opportunity on um, YouTube and Facebook. Um, I'm excuse me, YouTube and Instagram and like TikTok. So I don't know. Choose your platform and pull your phone out and start making some content. Um, a picture is worth a thousand words, so I can imagine a video is worth five thousand words or ten thousand words. So, pull your phone out and start taking action, and stop looking at looking at what everybody else is doing, and get up off your ass and make something for yourself. Stop scrolling up all the damn day and make something. That's the best advice I could give. Make something. Okay. Stop being such a critic. Everybody want to be a critic. They. You know what I mean? Everybody's a critic now. <laughs> like, make something. Make something. You know what I mean? Everybody got something to say. Make something. Yeah, everybody's a creator. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about monetizing and how do you, how, what is monetizing? Because I don't really know much about monetizing. What is monetizing and how do you monetize? Or how do you make the content that something where it would get monetized? This, this is a good subject. Um, and I, I'm at, I really want to, I want to write a book just on this subject. You know what I mean? Mm. Because um, someone called, I had a consultation a few weeks ago with a guy and he didn't know what monetization was. And monetization is when you, you, you turn your content into where ads are being run on your ad, on your content. And um, mm -hmm. I like YouTube because people have become a millionaires off of YouTube content. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I know, Things are popping on Instagram and people are building following and but I don't know if they have a um the monetization. I know you could like tell people, Oh, give me ten thousand for a post. And I, I don't know, I don't have a million followers on Instagram, but I know I know for a fact there's people that just started channels last year and their channels are doing ten, twenty, thirty thousand a month. You know what I'm saying? Um some guys are doing a hundred thousand, uh, a few hundred thousand a month. Um, off, of, off of just making videos every day. And um, how you do that is, like I said, you got to pick up your camera and just start putting that work in. And uh, after you after you have, um, like on, on YouTube, I know after you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch minutes, um, then you're allowed to apply for monetization. 
Now, just because you got monetization doesn't mean you're going to make money. Just because you, you got approved doesn't mean, oh, shit, I'm about to be making a thousand, two, two, three thousand a month. Now, nah, you still got to put in a lot of work. And then after a while, mm -hmm. after a while, when um, your content starts um, getting traction and people are watching it, um, the YouTube algorithm starts to reward you and they start to put your content in the suggested videos. And then that's when, you know, you could upload a video and it do a million views in one day. You know, once YouTube starts recognizing that you're making good content that they feel is suggest suggestion worthy. And a lot of people don't know how to make that type of content because they're still like just trying to make sensational content. Like, you know, like, like, like if I do something sensational right now, I could get a lot of views. Like if I get on Instagram and get butt naked and run in circles and put a pie in my face, they're going to say, look at that. Look at Presley. He's a jackass. Did you see that video where he was? And I'll be popping for the day. My phone is going to be blowing up, but not in a good way. Right. Not in a good way. They're just going to say, yeah, he's a jackass. But um, <laughs> 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 no. Nah, but you want to you want to be you want to be making stuff that um, it, it attracts people. But you're not making a fucking clown of yourself, and that's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. Um, the easiest thing to do is make a clown of yourself to try to get some attention. But um, now nah, YouTube is it, they rec that if you're making good content and you're bringing value to people and um, you're adding something original. And they got their the algorithms figured out where they they you know watch minutes and uh, likes, dislikes, comments. It's it all adds up to what they think is a high value video. And if you could make content that's high value, then you can make a lot of money with the YouTube platform. So I'm a um I like YouTube. I like YouTube. They're, you know, on my TV, they're on all my smart TVs. I, I when I turn on my TV, I don't see an Instagram app. I don't see a TikTok app on my TV. Um, I mean, it's, you want to be on TV, right? You know? <laughs> so, like I said, I, I like I like the YouTube platform, and um, yeah, that's how you monetize your content. You need a, a, a four thousand watch minutes and a thousand subscribers minimum, and um, a watch minute is if someone just logged into this live and they watched it for three minutes, that would count as three watch minutes. Now, if 10 people watch for three minutes, that would be 10 times three. That would be 30 watch minutes. So for a three-minute watch from 10 people, that's 30 watch minutes. So now I would need 3,970 more watch minutes in order to be eligible for mm. a, a, um, a monetized YouTube channel. So that's how watch minutes work. So a lot of times, like, long form video content like this where you talk where po that's why a lot of these podcasts are coming up real fast because um mm. they're able to accumulate lots of watch minutes fast um like um like like gilly the kid the million dollars worth the game that podcast mm -hmm. it just shot up because they will put they will they will they will putting out content that everybody everybody likes gilly's funny they able to watch him but then they started having these artists on there and the podcast took off. And any most podcasts that you're able to get a lot of mainstream people on, they end up blowing up real fast because you're able to get a lot of watch minutes. And YouTube likes watch minutes because watch minutes means people are on YouTube. People are they're not on Facebook. They're not on Instagram. They're on YouTube. So if you're bringing a hundred watch minutes per video, you know times uh, ten people was watching, that's a thousand minutes. How many minutes is in a day? You know what I mean? It's like so. So watch minutes are really valuable now, and that's why um, long form content is being it's um, being promoted more because it's more valuable to the platforms. They want to keep people on these platforms, and um, what that's called is bounce rate. The bounce rate, like in web terms, is how long someone actually stays on a website before they bounce, <laughs> before they leave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's called bounce rate. So YouTube wants. I, um, I think they they don't want a high bounce rate. They think I think it's you want a low bounce rate. You don't want people to leave your site to go somewhere else. So if you if your videos are low bounce rate, then YouTube is going to promote you because they're like this guy keeps people on our site. So yeah, once you start understanding how things work, you can start making content based around these factors, and you can be successful in a short amount of time. Um, but everybody just wants to be seen, and everybody just wants to be famous. But that. They're not thinking about like the, the intricacies of how to really do this efficiently and fast. And that's why I was able to break an artist in three years. 
uh, because I understand how I understand how things work, you know. Um, and I know I could do it again. I'm just not 100 percent focused on breaking artists right now because, you know. New experiences you've been to. I've been, I did you, it. You've done a lot. Yeah, I did it, and you know. Yeah. Uh, what were you? What were you? Gram? You were also. You're also a Grammy nominated producer. We got. We got a Grammy nomination for the Tuesday. I was a co-writer and, and a okay. publisher on that song, and it got nominated for a Grammy for best song rap performance. I think in 2015. Or was it 2016? I can't remember. 2015 or 2016? Yeah. So, um, if anybody does want to talk to you or reach you for, I'm uh, for a uh, consultant advice, um, you just literally broke down monetization in a form of what I did. I never heard of, or I've never, I never dug into it that much. But and you broke it down in such a simple way where like a lot of people could understand it. So what I wanted to ask, like you were saying about the million dollars worth of game, which is hosted by Gilly the Kid and Wild Two Six Seven, his cousin. Um, I'm noticing that if you were like once, if you were like, were like if you were like popular and then you come back out like and rebrand yourself and stuff, is it is it easier for that kind of content to get um monetized? But like, let's say you're just you're independent and you're just coming out and you don't have that huge base. Is there anything that you should do when you're trying to get your stuff monetized against somebody that has a little more credibility, more clout, knows more people? Yeah, um, it's a lot easier for um, people with following, mm -hmm. existing followings to blow up on mm -hmm. the internet now because they can, you know, you can take 10,000 people and like I said, 10,000 people watching a video for, I don't know, 100 minutes. I don't know, what's the math mm -hmm. on that? Um, a million minutes? I don't know, what what is that? 10,000 uh, times of that? <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm no mathematician. <laughs> it's a lot of minutes. It's uh, It's over, I know it's over a hundred thousand minutes so i mean if, if you could be dropping videos that's doing a hundred thousand minutes of video youtube sees that and they're like wait a minute why there's a lot of videos that get uploaded on the internet every day there's a lot it's something like 20 50 000 a day so when you're making content that's getting this much traction it stands out from the bunch and the algorithm automatically recognizes oh this isn't like the other 49,999 videos that got uploaded today. This one got 100,000 watch minutes. Why? Because Gilly has a million followers on Instagram and his cousin Wallow has a million followers on Instagram. And when they put out a video, they're pushing people from Instagram to YouTube. So now YouTube, YouTube sees mm -hmm. that, oh, you're working for us. So we're going to work for you. Yeah. You're bringing yeah. traffic to us. So there, right. there was a time where like when Soldier Boy came up, where YouTube was giving out free traffic, where all you had to do was be on YouTube. I was a part of that, where all you had to do was make a, your title catchy enough. And if, if Beyonce, I had this video called Beyonce in the Shower, right? So when you see the title, people used to think, oh, I'm about to see Beyonce in the shower. So mm -hmm. if Beyonce came out with a single ladies video, I came out with Beyonce in the shower. So my video would show up. You know how I like, Nowadays, you see a related Beyonce video, it's going to be Megan Thee Stallion. It's going to be mainstream Vivo, 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 Vivo. But back then, when like Soulja Boy was coming up, all you had to do was was was, was alter your title. So I remember I had this video called Beyonce in the Shower, and it did like 10 million views. And it was like a picture. I printed a picture of Beyonce out, and I put it in the shower. And then I like I just zoomed in on it, like and it was water falling on the picture. It was Beyonce in the Shower. It really was. Like, I what you know, but a lot of people came up off of clickbait. You can't do clickbait. Click, yeah. You can't do clickbait like you used to. They they stopped all of that. They mm -hmm. stopped all of that. And Soulja Boy was one of and, huh? I'm sorry, but that's no, keep going. Was one of the people who capitalized off of clickbait. So, but that's not no the clickbait. case no more. You gotta actually, you gotta actually bring some value. You gotta actually, uh, you also gotta make clean content. You can't be cursing all in these videos. You can't be doing all that fuck shit. Um, excuse my language. You can't be. You, they don't. There ain't no money in that. There's no money in that. I mean, you could, you can do that, but you'll make less money than somebody who's uh, running a channel that's clean, informative, and advertiser friendly. It's all about being advertiser friendly, and that's something that I didn't realize when I was making like, when I was in my twenties making content. I was just trying to make something that people was gonna be hype about, 
and want to watch. I wasn't thinking about, oh, the advertisers aren't going to want to put ads on these videos because we're running around shooting guns and we're saying F this, F this, N-word that, N-word that. The advertisers ain't going to want to put no ads on these videos. So it's like right. I'm getting popular and people know about me, but I'm not making no money off this. So... Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I just don't want I don't want to lose any of the like stuff we're talking about because Instagram only gives you about 60 minutes. I'll go on and on. To, uh... oh, yeah, I'll go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 I really enjoy talking to you because you you let a lot of people know a lot of information, a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff is like advertisement monetization jewels. But I just want to ask real quickly, what about pay promotion? Is that worth it? Before I wrap like the interview up, pay promotion. Yeah, if you got money to burn, <laughs> burn it all. Yeah. You got money? <laughs> uh, let's spend it. Let's run some ads. Yeah, let's do it. So I'm, yeah, I'm particularly, I think I'm talking about the pay promotion through other people's pages on Instagram. Is that worth it? Yeah, any promotion is okay. good. They say, they say somebody talking bad about you is good promotion. I don't really believe yeah. I don't really believe that whole any promotion is good promotion. That's some people that's just trying to get that fifteen minutes of fame. Um, you want good promotion. And if you could mm -hmm. promote your stuff on someone's channel that has a bigger following than you and they're catering, they're selling something that's similar to what you're trying to sell, by all means right. pay that person to get your stuff on there. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so I wanted to thank, so, okay, um, is there any last word or last words that you wanted to say before you, uh, before I wrap up the interview? Because I've got about three or four, about a couple more minutes. I'll, I'll keep talking. I'm, I'm chilling right now. I'm at home, so I'm chilling, <laughs> man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my element, so I'm not in no rush. I'm chilling right now, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's whatever, whenever. We could, we could do like a, okay, so. maybe we could do like a Zoom or Skype session. And you know we could probably talk yeah. talk more about uh, monetization because I I want I do want to talk about that more. I never really went into that topic on my channel, so I, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to talk more about that. I'm I'm, I'm okay. chilling right now. I'm chilling up there, so it's cool. Okay, so um, that's pretty much. So I wanted to thank everybody, the viewers. I want to thank all the viewers and the supporters. Thank you so much. And I also wanted to thank you, Presley Snipes coming on and talking about all the music, all the business stuff and all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes because we definitely definitely need that and I want you to check out and uh, subscribe to Presley Snipes YouTube and you can also find the music business I mean um, how to make it in the music business book using social media is it I, using, it's using the longest title media? ever I know how to make it in the music <laughs> business using social media marketing and build a large following Try saying that. Yes, yes, times. yes. So we definitely drop. <laughs> I definitely watch your YouTube videos. I just put it on because it's like it's it's really informational and it's really good. So I wanted to tell you, um, thank you, and I wanted to tell you to have a great night. Thank and I'll you. probably I'll be inboxing you a little later. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you for um having thank me you on, so your, much. on your program. Thank you. I, I, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. You too.